Your Royal Highness, Your Excellency, my lords, rabbis, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to say what an enormous privilege it has been for all of us this evening to hear the outstanding message from His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. <laughs> His Royal Highness is an ongoing source of inspiration for all of us and for every citizen in this country. And we would like to thank you, Your Royal Highness, for everything that you do with so much sincerity and in such an outstanding manner for everyone in this country and for all of mankind. <laughs> in the Mishnah Tractate Sanhedrin, the following question is posed. Why is it that originally God only created one single person? Would it not have been more fitting or more fair to have the original couple on earth? Or perhaps the original family? Maybe the original community or even the original nation? Why just one person? And the Mishnah answers by telling us that at that time, the entire world existed for the sake of one person, Adam. And therefore, whoever saves a single life, it is as if he or she has saved an entire world. And whoever destroys a single life, it is as if he or she has destroyed an entire world. And then the Mishnah goes on to give us a second reason. It's to teach us, says the Mishnah, that throughout all ages, every single human being is descended from the same ancestor. And therefore, we are part of one single global family. It is correct that you can test the greatness of a nation according to the way in which it treats its most vulnerable members. But in Jewish tradition, we go one step further, because when it comes to acts of kindness and benevolence, we recognize no borders. Whoever the person is, and wherever he or she might be, they are part of what we call mishpacha, our global family. And therefore, from the dawn of creation, God has given hope to every suffering individual to let that person know that around the world, there are members of the global family who will be there, or at least should be there for them. And isn't that exactly what has happened to us? In the darkest times of our suffering, when we have received at those moments of low ebb, glimmers of hope, isn't that what the parents of 10,000 Jewish children in 1938 and 1939 living in Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia received that glimmer of hope when Britain opened her borders to the kinder transport? Isn't that what the refuseniks in the former Soviet Union experienced when they heard about campaigns throughout the world for their sake? And isn't that the type of hope received by the Jews of Yemen, who at the beginning of the 1950s saw what they presumed to be magic carpets arriving in the form of aeroplanes to take them to freedom and safety in the state of Israel? So what kind of hope exists today with regard to those impoverished souls, millions of them around the world, who are worried where their next meal might come from? What hope exists today for the sake of refugees desperately trying to find a safe home and haven? With regard to the impoverished, alas, they're receiving no hope from those who Pharaoh, king of Egypt style, are hardening their heart 
because those who are suffering happen to be from others, not part of their own kith and kin. And sadly, there are so many millions of refugees who are receiving no signs of hope from countries closing their borders to them. And alas, right now, not much hope from the United States of America, of all countries, where President Trump has signed an executive order which seeks to discriminate against individuals based totally on their religion or their nationality. We as Jews, perhaps more than any others, know exactly what it is like to be the victims of such discrimination, and it is totally unacceptable. But I must tell you that there is a lot of hope. I see so much hope from the millions around the globe right now who are taking exception and who are voicing their opposition to this recent trend in America. And I see so much hope from all of you in this hall right now. Well, Jewish relief exists to give hope. During the past year, it has given hope to more than 80,000 people in 21 countries. So many people who are suffering from poverty, so many who are suffering as victims from natural disasters such as floods and hurricanes and earthquakes and tsunamis. And it's not just World Jewish Relief. It's all of you, ladies and gentlemen, who are the partners of World Jewish Relief, who are proud to be at an evening such as this one tonight to show how much you care about the single global family of which we are a part, giving us that responsibility to stand up, to be counted, and to be there for every human being created in the image of God, wherever they might be. I will never forget that look of hope in the eyes of refugees when I visited them in Idomeni on the border of Greece and Macedonia to witness at first hand the outstanding work that World Jewish Relief is carrying out using the monies that we contribute through a dinner such as this. It was truly magnificent to see the hope in their eyes as they bit into sandwiches that we gave them to eat, as they drank some water that we gave them to drink, as they benefited from the medical facilities of the mobile medical unit World Jewish Relief runs, saving lives. Yes, World Jewish Relief has saved so many worlds because of so many individuals' lives which have been saved, thanks to all of us here this evening through our support for this outstanding charity. So ladies and gentlemen, all I want to do is to say a massive thank you. Thank you so much, World Jewish Relief, for everything you have accomplished and for everything you will still be doing. And to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much.